Welcome to Three Nice Things, the podcast that has decided we've been so mean to these movies, it's time to say three nice things. You can find more about this show and others like it at our network website, radiomeanwhile.com, where we have a forum for you to share your thoughts on this and upcoming movies. Follow us on Facebook or Twitter at Nice Things Pods, and please rate, subscribe, and share this show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Today we're talking about the 2005 film, Son of the Mask. Uh... <laughs> I'm Eric Mickles, known online as Dust vs. Tweak, and with me is the co-host of the All the Books show, Nick Gunning. Hello. And music man, Ben Lehman. Hi, everybody. Uh, the reason why I sound so discouraged, and Nick made that sound, is because we're recording this literally minutes after finishing the film, Son of the Seconds. Mass. <laughs> Seconds after. And it, it hurt. But we'll get into why. But first, let's get into the film itself. Do we have to? Look, I'm glad that we're recording this right now because I could not think about this movie for another second. Yeah, once I'll, this is done. I'll think about it for the duration yeah. of this episode and then I will do some sort of therapy where I cull it from my memory bank. I, I have to edit this podcast oh after we're done, so I'll have even longer. Twice as long as this episode runs. The original film, The Mask, earned $350 million on a $23 million budget and that was in 1994. The son of The Mask has a budget between 80 to $100 million. Oh Upon release, the movie went on to make $17 million in North America with a worldwide total of $57 million, meaning it is a box office bomb, according to Box Office Mojo. And at the time of recording, it has a critic score of 6% on Rotten Tomato and an audience score of 16%. What? <laughs> who are the people, who are the 16% of people who found something, anything positive about that movie? The this is a real there, question. Yeah. I want you to find these people because I have some serious questions to ask them. Hannah on Facebook said, it's not as stupid as it could be. Disagree, Hannah. <laughs> Past host of this show, Julia, shared the dance scene in this movie. Okay, well that's, it's kind to call it a dance scene. Apparently she likes this. Uh, Julia, who was on the Fantastic Four episode and the Mario Brothers episode, enjoyed this movie when she was eight years old, but I find that to be no excuse. No, it's no excuse at all. <laughs> Richard Roper said of the <laughs> film... Of Ebert and Roper fame. Of Ebert and Roper. In the five years I've been co-hosting this show, this is the closest I've ever come to walking out halfway through the film. And now that I look back on the experience, I wish I had. Go ahead, okay. Nick. What well, what happens? In, and we don't know if this is a sequel or a prequel to I think Jim Carrey's a, I The think Mask. I think that it's a sequel. You think it's a I sequel? I think that it's a sequel. Okay. Let me preface this by saying the last episode I was on, Battlefield Earth, I read a thousand page book to prep for this. So I felt that I'd set up a precedent. And so since there's no novelization of this, I read the only thing comparable, and that was the Kitty Mask comic, Itty Bitty Mask, yeah. by Franco and Art Baltazar. And I'm glad that I did. Because Why? reading that is the only positive thing that this experience has brought out for mm. me. Okay. That's about a nice zookeeper who gets the mask and has a wacky time. Oh, that'd be fun. It, there was no gross sexuality or uncomfortable <laughs> moments. or It didn't put a darkness into the pit of my soul. But anyway. You're telling me... Uh, a mask story itty bitty mask that takes place with a bunch of animals yes has less urination than son of the mask literally gallons less <laughs> <laughs> okay all right son of the mask uh -huh. son of the mask Whew. okay all right so we open with loki the god of mischief looking at uh, a tour of of north mythology uh -huh. uh, led by ben stein the ben stein. only recurring yeah. character in the mask franchise first, yep. in the mask movie in this also in the cartoon yeah fun fact L loki's angry about some of the things he's saying tries to break in and get the mask only to find that it's fake mm -hmm. at that point we get odin coming in played by bob hoskins who is a, a repeat guest here on he was the on the mario nice brothers things. and he he's he's known and quoted for saying that the mario brothers is the worst thing he had ever done and the one thing yep. he would take back if he had a time machine i don't know i think if I was him, Son of the Mask would be a nice thing to cross right yes. off your resume. Yes. At least this Mario is... Brothers has a visual style. Mario yeah. Brothers mm. is a cult classic. <laughs> yes. It has its people who yeah. like it. This is a piece of garbage. Yes. All right, anyway. Uh, then we jump into Jamie Kennedy, mm -hmm. who is the poor man's, I guess the destitute man's Zach Braff, maybe is how I would describe him. He, yeah, we'll get we'll get into Jamie Kennedy. He is just a... a, a montage of terrible facial features and bad hair yeah he's trying to be right. a cartoonist he's at a cartoon com right, animation studio but he's giving he's, a tour to kids yeah he's like in a mascot role yeah. he's not in, in a creative role right so he's trying to come up with a uh, cartoon. a cartoon a cartoon 
So, meanwhile, uh, his dog has found the, the mask, mask, the mask. Uh, of the title. Yeah. Not the DVD of the mask. No. That would the, be a very good dog. The actual... Uh, would, ben is stunned into silence. Ben, are you all right? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. okay. I'm just Ben's, a little soft Ben's back. making it through. <laughs> okay. That's, that's totally fair. Uh, so the guy is trying to... Jamie Kennedy's character, Tim Avery, probably mm-hmm. a take on Tex Avery. Oh, it is. He did a lot of it's Tex a, Avery. Yeah, it's a very... In there. Uh, so he's trying to he's trying to crack what he wants his cartoon to be. Uh, there's a big Halloween party coming up. He doesn't have anything to wear, no. so his dog brings him the mask. He wears the mask. Why? His wife. Yes. He's like, why don't you wear this mask? And he's like, okay. So he wears the masks uh, for maybe like five minutes, and then he doesn't wear it again for like during that five minutes, ninety minutes. Him and his wife conceive a yeah. child. Yes. While first, he's wearing the mask. First, first he goes to this party uh-huh. as like a red-haired plastic mask. It's the worst-looking thing and, in the world. And he's supposed to like liven up a party, so he does a dance. Mon- What's the song? I can't, uh, can't take my eyes off of you. Yes. Yeah. He does this like drawn out version, multiple interpretations. We have a yeah. cowboy, we have a rap, mm-hmm. we have, I guess you'd say hip hop, but I think that's an insult to One hip-hop. that's kind of like putting on the Ritz. Yeah. It's bad. It, it's not funny. It's I've never watched a movie before where I felt as if we were in a live audience of a stand up comic who is just I've I've watched we've watched a few movies on yeah. this podcast that are very bad, but I think this was the first movie where like my my mouth made that grimace that yeah. was trying it felt like the rest yeah. of my face was trying to escape yeah. and it didn't disappear until yeah. Jamie Kennedy took the mask off well, whenever uh, he's in the mask it's it's abysmal it is it is it, this movie is completely and utterly joyless <laughs> it is and i you know we watched battlefield earth i didn't feel bad for the people in battlefield earth watching this I really felt for every extra in that scene watching mm. Jamie Kennedy. I was like, they don't need this. They yeah. don't deserve this. Yeah. So we do the big Halloween dance. Uh, meanwhile, his wife wants to have a baby, and he doesn't want to have a baby in, uh, until he gets like a big hit at work. Mm-hmm. But he goes home as the mask. And they have a baby. They have gross sex. You don't know. I do know. <laughs> <laughs> and boom, she's pregnant. Yeah. And boom, his boss likes the mask and wants a cartoon about that. Yeah. Uh, she has the baby. Mm-hmm. Then she goes away mm-hmm. for a week for work, and the dude has to watch the baby and create his mask cartoon. Meanwhile, Loki is trying to locate the mask, and the baby we see has mask-like powers. They use the phrase over and over again. I just want to get this right. I born, want to get born. this right. Yeah. The baby has been born of the mask. Yes. What they say over and over again. It's the mask... Uh... Sperm. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> yeah, that, that impregnated the life. Word. For lack of a better word. So, Do you uh, think in another world, in another version of this movie, if this was like the Jim Carrey movie, it would have been a scene like Look Who's Talking, where we would have seen the little yeah. spermites, but yeah. they would have all been little masks yeah. and making Tex Avery yeah. like cartoon Do, things. Like, doing like George Washington crossing the Delaware yeah. kind of thing. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I mean, okay. So the baby has mask powers, which is horrific. Like, yeah. this is going to date me a little bit, but it's like the Ally McBeal baby, but way, way worse CGI. The It was terrible. When the baby gets into CGI form, it looks like the Benjamin Button just effects. It does, Because yeah. it's, the baby has a lot of hair yeah. in real life, yeah. so when it's the CGI baby... You've just got a baby wrinkly face with hair, yeah. and it looks like an old man on a tiny yeah, body, but does. also it looks like Satan is a tiny baby yeah. with a CGI body. Okay, so <laughs> that's all happening. So the the dad is slowly realizing that the baby has powers. Say Jamie Kennedy. Don't Jamie, let him off the hook. Jamie Kennedy keeps realizing that the baby has powers. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, Loki is going through all the babies that were born at that time, trying to find the right baby, mm-hmm. and that's a whole grotesque montage as well. Yeah. Uh, finally finds the baby. Then a big fight ensues. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dog has gotten the mask. Uh, once or twice, Trying yep. to kill the baby. Yeah. Dog's uh, jealous of the baby's attention. Yep. So baby's ma- getting tired of Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. Like most people are. Right, yeah. Uh, is, did anyone else feel like this had a weird... It, it almost felt like the afterbirth of Ron Howard's The Grinch. Huh. In terms of like style yes. and like actually yes, I can the dressing see that, yeah. like when Loki's going around as like a vacuum cleaner salesman, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the Grinch. It this is. is Jim Carrey's well, the Grinch. All the, all the like super saturated colors in yeah. the scenes, the and, like, weird yeah angles where the camera's like looking down, but we're also very close. Yes. A, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, and we are going to spoil the movie, everyone, right? We need to yes, say we're that. spoiling we're the, spoil movie. the movie. We're spoiling Listen, Son of the Mask. whoever wrote, produced, directed, and starred in this spoiled the movie. Oh. <laughs> uh, so they, they're fighting. What, what else do we need to know? It all comes to a head, basically, yeah. at the end. And uh, it comes down to the baby gets to choose uh -huh. whether it wants to go with its parents or uh -huh. it wants to go with Loki. Uh -huh. And it really seems like maybe it's going to go with Loki. Yeah. Um, it goes with Jamie Kennedy. It goes with Jamie Kennedy. Poor they Jamie. run out of time. Odin comes back. Yeah. Jamie Kennedy is able to heal the relationship between Odin and Loki. Yeah. They go off to wherever, mm -hmm. and then they watch the mask cartoon that's been made. Yep. Yeah. But and it's not as good as the mask cartoon that was on Nickelodeon? I don't know, but it's not as good as that. Okay. They're watching it. Um, then the, the wife, the wife yeah. Tanya, I want to say her Tanya. name was, yeah, that um, right. says that she's pregnant. Uh -huh. And then the baby winks at the camera, which right. is very confusing. Yeah. Uh, we get a couple of songs. Mm -hmm. End of end of story. There's one yeah. very obvious song at the end credits that I was dancing to. Yeah, but the so the the lines are just like you're having a baby and you're scared. Don't hide behind a mask. Yeah, it's like goodness. It's really <laughs> it's really going through. Has no I one just... ever listened to Men in Black by Will Smith? I don't Black. feel <laughs> that that synopsis really explained how bad this movie was. It, it it can't. The the Jamie Kennedy wearing the mask is horrific. Every every effect in this movie is horrific. This thing is on speed, but it feels like it lasts forever. It's, it's the we we watched it for free with Voodoo Video, but that meant we had to watch it with commercials, and the commercials were like a breath of fresh they air. They were the saving grace. It was like the movie was holding our head underwater, and every now and then those commercials would pull us by the hair yeah. out. We'd get a few breaths and then back under the water. This, I mean, this cast is terrible. Uh, Trailer Howard is good in Monk, who plays the wife. She she's good in Monk. Cal uh -huh. Penn is good. Let's talk about uh, some other parts about this movie first. I want to know: Was this the first time you guys? Because Nick, I'm sh I'm I've never seen this movie before. Yeah. I don't think Ben has. But if anyone ha would have seen Son of the Mask, it would have been you. You know what? That's fair. Because but you loved you loved the first Mask. I do. You watched the animated Mask. I well not much. I've seen it here and there. But you also read the book. Well, I've read the book to prepare for this. Okay. <laughs> so, maybe I'm wrong. You, you've just never been like, never you know have. what? I'm going to try Son of the no. Mask. You know what? No, I never have. Do you guys remember the... the? It was a very quick, like, con proof of concept trailer that uh, played, and it must have been, like, 2004, because this movie came out in February, where it was just a baby sitting in the high chair. This baby. It was in a high chair, and it was a normal baby, and then he stands up in his high chair... Just does a flip off of it, lands and does that kind of like sh uh, stage show, arms in the air at the camera, and his eyebrows go up and down, and it then says "Son of the Mask," and it no. was like the worst. And I remember people seeing that trailer and be like, "What the f is this?" I am shocked that this movie was made in two thousand five. It's, yeah, I mean, it came out in two thousand. Uh, well, so, yeah, but, but I mean, still. Yeah, that even just that trailer was like this. Just that baby scene was horrible, and I so I just I'd never seen it. And it's a PG film, so this is technically a kids slash family yes. film. Yes, and I, well, that's why I read Itty Bitty Mask. Except I there's thought, a lot of women like in bras. Mask. Yes, there's a lot of uh, yes. Can we? I don't want to get too gross. heavy, but can we talk about the gross sexuality in this? There's a lot of it? yeah. Because I mean, we already said the first one that they like she doesn't realize he's the mask, and they have sex and conceive, conceive mm -hmm. a child. So that's gross. Where she says, "What's got into you?" and he says, "Let's find out." Yeah. I don't know. It's that's horrific. No, thank and then you. In the dance scene, like he basically uses his powers to like take women's shirts off and uh -huh. put them in like bras to dance. Yep. So that's gross. Um, when when uh, when Loki is trapping them, a big wall comes down and it says Loki is a god in a sack. Yeah, which is just so like yep. incongruous with the rest <laughs> of the movie. And then then uh -huh. when when the actual real wife comes back and he thinks it's Loki, he like really like. Grabs her aggressively. <laughs> he does. He's he smashes like her head into the wall. She's like, like, "Stop it!" <laughs> it's, it's very upsetting. And yeah. then he's like, "Is it you?" And he just like grabs, grabs her, her boobs. Bra yeah. He's like, "Oh, it is you." And I mean, this is the only way I could have known. And then in the end, when he puts the mask back on and she sees him, she is like clearly aroused by it. Yeah, She's she like is. into it, and yeah. it's like, "Oh, uh, yeah." I just. I don't understand. Yeah. Like, is this a PG kids movie or just like a gross sex comedy? Because it seems like they don't know uh, either. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that was all really like. I don't know. I just found it gross. I found it sort of offensive. Ben, the whole Annie? movie is kind of that way. It really it's just is. Like it's yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot of of everything. Yeah. Of color mm -hmm. of yeah. nasty. <laughs> yeah. 
I but know. so many things happen that like there's a scene where uh, well, you reacted most to this, Eric, when when Jamie Kennedy's going to feed the baby the bottle and he breaks the light bulb yep. and is almost going to shove like the the and exposed the light and, 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 and then it's supposed to be baby. comedy because the baby's eyes go out of his head. Yeah. He's like, wow, and then fixes things. I'm like. He was gonna stab the baby with a broken, plugged yeah. in. He was gonna electrocute lamp. the baby. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it, it, it. What he was doing to the baby was what how I felt to the whole movie. Like, but, stop it, stop it. But like, there was that, and there yeah. was like the dog trying to kill the baby. Yeah. I mean, it's still a baby. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, next father. I just, <laughs> I just couldn't. At that point, though, mm-hmm. not I. I can't like. Thanks defending the movie. <laughs> I was gonna say I do not want to like nope. use any of my no, words. No, no. To, to yeah, the movie. No, yeah. But at that point, like, I, I mean, you know, you know that he's a mask baby. You know right? that he's a mask yeah. baby, and for me, I'm like, you're watching this. Yeah. I'm kind of like, I was talking to Eric about this yeah. earlier. Like, right. I used to watch a lot of the Tom and Jerry cartoons, oh, yeah. and like, yeah, that true. that felt like sort of on brand. Oh in, yeah, that's that clearly way. what they're what they're going for. But yeah. I mean, you could tell that that's what they're going for. But at that point, you're like, this baby is horrifying. Yeah. Maybe the dog should, you know, kind of take care of it. This, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's something. This movie, like, I don't know if you guys experienced this. This movie actually, like, bothered me. Yeah, it's rough. I, I feel like it's it's, it's a little I, upsetting, almost. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, it's funny that you brought up The Grinch earlier, because both of these movies actually gave me a physical... Re- like, it <laughs> made me, like, feel sick. Yeah, really. You know, not, like, you yeah. know, just queasy. Yeah. It's the camera it's, angles. Yeah, it's, it's the over cameras. The fish eye lens yeah. and yeah. different things. Yeah. It's just the it's weird bizarre. green screens, the weird CGI. So yeah, all of that. But I just mean like the the tone of it and the things that happen. I found upsetting. Yeah, like I did never, I never once. It has no clue what it. it's doing, no. and it has at the end. We're supposed to have guessed that Jamie Kennedy learned that he's grown up to be a father, but there's a, there's no there's no actual way. follow through on that. This this isn't anything that we've been watching. It's absolutely a mess. There is no through line in this movie. Yeah, there's only a few actors who dodged the bullet making this film. Uh, Jack Black turned down the role in in 2004. So yeah, he and at, at the time he said he turned down the role and he thought Jamie Kennedy uh, was going to be picked. So I don't know if Jack Black was the only other person they asked, but that was the only other name attached. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, Jim Carrey had been attached to this film in some capacity yes. when this was originally called. The Mask 2. I remember, I remember hearing about like The Mask 2 coming out. So The Mask 2 was was planned. The director of the original Mask film, Chuck Russell, was interested in making a sequel. He had said in uh, the commentary on the Laserdisc, no less, that he wanted to make The Mask 2. It was already expected that the movie was going to happen, that the magazine Nintendo Power ran a contest for a walk-on role in the possible film. But Jim Carrey turned down the role due to his time on Ace Ventura when Nature Calls, he felt sequels didn't challenge him as an actor. So he turned down a $10 million paycheck to be in The Mask 2. So th- that's the last Jim Carrey was attached to it. Uh, and in case you were worried, the person who won that Nintendo Power contest received $5 in prize and merchandise. So they fared so what? much better than us. $5,000? $5,000. Okay. <laughs> what did I say? $5. Oh, no. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Now, apparently, uh, the kid was offered the $5,000 in merchandise or... He could hang on to the role until the mask two or whatever oh. ever happened and is now quoted as saying he absolutely made the right call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when asked why he made the film, Jamie Kennedy said, I'll give you 2.5 million reasons. Why is anybody talking to Jamie Kennedy? Jamie Kennedy made $2.5 million for this movie. Can you imagine that? I, so, I need to lie down. However... The actor hated his time filming the movie, which took place in Sydney, because hardly anyone recognized him in public when he was in Sydney, okay. and he was repeatedly turned down by local women in bars who had no idea who he was. If I may... Go, you might say exactly what I was about to say. Could it be that they did know <laughs> Exactly! <laughs> it's just like, you're Jamie Kennedy, of course you're being turned... And of course nobody knows who you are. Goodness. If, if he got paid one dollar for every unappealing facial expression he made, oh my that gosh. would equal the two point five million. For me, I'm I taken. haven't seen him in anything else. So, and like when Scream, this movie I think came Scream out, is the only I've thing seen I him in the first two. Scream? I've seen him okay. in the first two screams, and he also had a show called The Jamie Kennedy Experiment. Yeah. And this was like a prank show where he played different types of characters, oh, no. and they would set up a situation with real people, and at the end he'd be like, "You've been exed." And they're like, oh, I'm on a show. And then the cameras would come out. 
And I watched a lot of that show. Oh. I think he was just coming off of the popularity of Scream. Uh, yes, you might. Sorry, you what? could blame me for watching the Jamie Kennedy experiment. But, I feel like Son of the Mask might have been part of the Jamie Kennedy experiment. And we've all been yeah. X'd. Yeah, if that was just a prank to upset me, yep. good job, Jamie it, it Kennedy. Worked. But what were you saying, Ben? Well, just like I, you know, back at that time, I don't know like what his stock is. Like, why is he the in two thousand five? There's, there's, I can't think of anything because the Jamie Kennedy experiment would have ended in two thousand three. Well, when so. did the first mask come out? Ninety four. Yeah. So like, there's. <laughs> so in twenty twelve, in an interview, he was asked how the son of the mask affected him personally, and Jamie Kennedy said, "Yes, you got me right after a batch of bad interviews, so I'm going to be honest with you about this." It does bother me because I've been killed, absolutely killed. But honestly, doing this movie is an interesting experience because I just came off of my show, The Jamie Kennedy Experiment, and Malibu's Most Wanted, where I had a good amount of control. And then in this movie, I didn't have any control. I just can't do that. I have to have my voice in there. If I can't, I'm just going to be like, I'm doing someone else's thing. I have to have some of my voice because I have my own experiences that I've lived through. All I can do is just try to make things independently. That's the only way you can do it. The only way you can do it if you're huge, huge, huge star. I'm not there yet. I'm just a working actor. <laughs> Look, I don't mean to be a jerk, but I'm not there yet. Yeah. I think the ship has sailed. Jamie Kennedy, yeah. yeah. In 2012, absolutely, 2012. yeah. Uh, and as Nick pointed out, yes, Ben Stein is the only one, because he was both in the f both movies and the cartoon. We all wear masks, yeah. metaphorically speaking. Yep. You know, I think that we do... We, before we get into our three nice things, we do have to be honest that in the very beginning, when that kid came up and hit him in the nuts, we all laughed. And the little kid oh, comes at the up very and, beginning, and, like, yes. hits Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. I mean, that's a... It's that a, was foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that baby was speaking for all he of was. us. He was, he was. We yeah. laughed at that, like, innocence. And yep. then we never laughed again. <laughs> so, so, enough of all that, then. Happened. It's time to say our three nice things. Okay. Nick, you can start. Okay. You hated this so much. I did. So, uh, one of mine is very early, before we really got into that. Uh, we, we have we have the whole scene with Ben Stein and Loki like being crazy, uh -huh. and then it, we kind of cut away from that, and we're like, okay, we're done with the prologue, and then we just sort of see like a nice little shot of a city far away and a little idyllic stream, uh -huh. and in the stream you see the, the little mask come down and it uh -huh. winds around the creek and hits up against the bank and kind of like sticks there, and I thought, oh, that was nice, right. That's it. That's it. You just li like that shot. I liked that moment, and then everything that came after it was just pure garbage. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It said Edge City. <laughs> yeah, it said the, Edge City. Which is yeah. from the first mask? Right. I can't remember the town I of the think, first mask. I think that is a callback to the first mask. The only real callbacks that I could recognize were Ben Stein, uh -huh. that, uh, and the fact that uh, when he when the, the, the sonogram was going on, the ultrasound... The baby, uh, <sighs> the baby sang Cuban Pete like, yeah. from the, the mask. Yeah, those are the only ones I noticed. Po past the prologue, when you see the the mask the coming in, I thought, well, that could be, you know, mm -hmm. it was it was a nice little show. It was artistic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was the only thing done with care in the whole movie. All right. In that same vein, I would say, well, so my three nice things all came pretty early. So I was like, let's <laughs> let's end. pump them out yeah. because okay. there's there's nothing. Sure. Um, yeah, there, anything that was like, I thought anything that was in the city that they filmed, especially okay. towards the beginning, I was like, oh, like that is a, an intentional thing that they did where it reminded me of like Gotham and Batman or yeah. like, like a, you know, stylized urban. Yeah. And, and that, that that's also... Sydney, Australia, you <laughs> ignorant slut. <laughs> but, it, but that also kind of did look like the street from the original mask. A bit, too. yeah. Like it had some of the same similarities. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, it was slightly gothic and yeah. not quite as garish as everything right. else. Yeah. That's true. You know? I'm, That's true. I would be terrified to watch any other movie directed by this guy yeah. if this is his, like, patented style. Because yeah. the movie is done in a style. Yeah. This isn't just, like, a workman director just comes in, set, makes sure the camera's in focus, and walks away. Like, this guy had vision. Yeah. And I'm afraid his yeah. other movies have the same vision. This this movie answers the questions, what if Tim Burton was just an idiot? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you like the gothic the city. nature of it. Yeah. The, city. the city. Okay. Uh, I'm like, hey, let me hear it, big guy. What do you got? So I said that thing about how the commercials kind of like gave yeah. us that breath of fresh air. Yeah. What, what is in the movie that felt like the breath of fresh air, and you, you knew the name of it, there's that old... Uh, uh, cartoon 
Michigan J Frog. Michigan J Frog. Yeah. That's a Tex Avery, it right? Is, yep. It's a Tex Avery cartoon about the frog who can sing. And the guy's like, oh, I'll, I'll take the frog on the road and yeah. I'll make tons of money. But then the frog doesn't sing yeah, in front of other people. you watch the whole cartoon. You really they, see that They whole basically sequence. show most the whole cartoon. Yeah. And I re- I, it that was so... That was almost like a peace offering. I'm like, I forgot this cartoon. Yeah. I really like this cartoon. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it was a nice <laughs> reminder of how good those original cartoons are. Because Jim Carrey in The Mask did the things he did because he liked those cartoons right. yeah. and he had that like kind of background yeah. whereas Loki's just like a Norse god so right. why does he spin around like the Tasmanian devil right. I mean they try to explain that by having the baby watch some cartoons but it's just I, I, I like the Tex Avery actual cartoon in there it's weird that they still try to go for it, but it absolutely fell flat every time oh, it did. anything else there did. There was never a time. Like, when Jim Carrey in the first mask is doing, like, the wolf thing, it felt like you were watching just a live-action version of those cartoons. Yeah. And this, it was like... Well, I mean, what was the mask is, like, what, 10 years before this? It's a long time. Yeah, about, yeah 10 years. I The CGI was better. In the in mask, the mask yeah. I'm positive. For, for so much less money. It's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, Jim Carrey's face is basically CGI. Yeah. That feels slightly cheap, but... I mean, if they're putting it in the movie, it's part of the movie. Well, I like watching Michigan J. Frog. I actually had that, but I thought, well, that's not fair to yeah. say. You know, I liked it when we weren't watching the movie. Yeah. Well, but yes, I agree. It's I, in I the did. movie. You're right. Every it now is. and then, we had to cut is. back to the baby. Yeah, I did like so. that. Sorry, All right. I gotta go again. Okay. Yeah, you do. Boy. Oh yeah, he's right there. Michigan J. Frog. Michigan. So yeah. I, scratched. I liked Loki's car. Loki's car. Loki's car. What? Yeah, it was like. A, I cannot. I remember yeah, Jamie Kennedy's like Hot Wheel car. It was like a black. Um, was a black like oh yeah a black like late 60s muscle car Mm -hmm. with like green accents and Uh i thought okay that's a cool car like when he's sitting there after he decides that that baby's not the one and Uh they come out and the baby does a weird exorcist thing which we didn't even talk about yeah he twists his head all around and then pukes mask green vomit on the windshield anyway but yeah, Loki's in the car, and you see you see him like cruising around in that car the other the couple of times. Uh-huh. I honestly thought that I was gonna be able to come out of this being like, well, Alan Cummings was at least good. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, because he is, mm-hmm. you know, he's he's Rooster and Annie. He's he's Boris in the uh, Golden Eye. Uh-huh. I saw him live on Broadway in mm-hmm. uh, Cabaret. Yeah. He's a, he's a great actor. He's, he's Nightcrawler and X Men too. <laughs> you know, he's funny. He's like he's got. It seems like he could have made that work, but mm-hmm. he did not. And his style, like with the weird flat ironed hair and and the strange like bodice that he was wearing, all of that was garbage. So uh-huh. he wasn't good. His look wasn't good, but the car was good. You like his car? I like the car. Okay. Right. Uh, listen, my second nice thing is Alan Cumming, because really? I think Alan Cumming is the only person who can walk away from this movie having done his job. I think you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'll give you that. Everybody else, like Jamie Kennedy, is horrendous, and I don't know what he's doing when he's just playing his character or what he's doing as the mask. I have no idea no. what they're going for when Jamie Kennedy's in the mask. No, but like Alan Cumming. Is, he has less energy when he's in the mask. Yeah, he's yeah. He's less compelling. But Alan Cumming is playing the role like 100%. He's in it. He's giving all the the facial expressions. He's playing it for big or for fun. He even throw, tries to throw in some pathos as a uh, dejected son from his, uh, his unhappy father, Odin. There's... It doesn't save the movie, but I feel like... No, it does not. <laughs> I feel like Alan Cumming can be like, yeah, I did the Son of the Mask. It was a paycheck. I did my job. And it was, it, it shows you that for him, a job is a job, and he's, gonna, he's not going to phone it in. I don't feel like Alan Cumming phoned it okay. in, and I feel like there are moments in there where, like, in a better movie, maybe he could... It would be a better role as well. When he was on, the movie was at its best when it was on Alan Cumming as Loki. Whenever he wasn't on screen, it was it was the son of the mask. So I, yeah, okay, all right. I guess I guess I would say that he was not. I don't think that he was good. No, but I think that this movie had a very low ceiling. Yeah, and he definitely hit that ceiling. Yeah, and he was the only one in the cast that at least hit the very low bar that was being set. Yeah, it felt like Alan Cumming was the only one who was at least trying to channel some of Jim Carrey's That's energy. True. That's true. And it felt like Alan Cumming would be a lot more interesting in the mask. Right. And could do a better, like, Jim Carrey impression yeah. than whatever this... Yeah. Th- I mean, 
Jamie Kennedy's mask is just all teeth, a big chin, and then this plastic like orange hair. hair yeah. yeah. Crazy. And he's, you're right, he's so low energy. He's like, hi, I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. And it's just like, what is this impression? The face you made when you did that <laughs> gave me flashbacks. <laughs> sorry. And I almost punched you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I almost Nobody do you. Jamie Kennedy impressions ever again. And that goes to you, you know listeners. I don't think you have to tell people. <laughs> you're the only one who's done that in decades. Like, How do we do that? All right. <laughs> Oh, All right, my favorite part about Ooh. that uh is this one of your nice things no this is okay. not a nice thing right. but uh i forgot to bring it up earlier is that after the i heard the instrumental for can't take my eyes and i was like yeah. oh that might be a nice thing yeah. i like that yeah. song I and then too. it turned into the monstrosity no, yeah. that it did but yeah. right at the end of that he says now it's time to dance now it's time to boogie yeah. and then everybody stops and, then it stops. and it's yeah. like what yeah okay yeah anyway that, he, says I, it, he says it at the beginning and then he ends it with that too. But you're uh, right. I it's missed the. Puzzling. I must have missed yeah. the first part. But yeah, yeah. very puzzling. Listen, Julia, again, who had been on the show before, she. I texted her. I was like, "This is the worst. You like this?" And she just texts back, "Now's the time we dance. Now's the time we boogie." And I'm like, "What is happening?" I felt like I was in a parallel <laughs> universe. Ben, what's your second nice thing? Uh, my second nice thing, I think, would be Stephen Wright, who is not in it very much, but he plays. Stephen Wright plays the boss character and oh what okay. just the, right. the the finally someone in this movie is giving a lower level of energy that's than right. jamie like, kennedy that's <laughs> true i know that guy from he was in uh, he was a recurring character on mad about you paul reiser and helen hunt okay yeah. he, he looks like, familiar i can't tell you what i've seen he's, him in he's in he's, a lot yeah of, like, i've only i've heard some of his like stand, he's like a one line yeah. comic that's uh, how i know him okay like, his like low energy ben stein-esque yeah. delivery yes yeah. he's, he's in a lot of like 80s 90s movies and and tv shows he just pop up a lot yeah he was doing his thing he was yeah. doing his thing. i mean that's what yeah. i expected but i was like okay yeah. like this is some this is familiar yeah. this is where did you come up with this cartoon? With, yeah. this, with this last nice things, I'm released from this. No, that's true. I might just run out of your house oh, as soon as I start, start screaming. It. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's my final nice thing. All right. In the end, uh, Loki takes the baby, uh -huh. which is a little upsetting. Yes. Uh, and then he and the baby are sort of like showing off their powers. Okay. And it gets it gets into like a fistful of dollars thing where. Uh, uh, Alan Cummings is dressed like Clint Eastwood, uh -huh. you know, and the baby's just a cowboy. And the baby's a cowboy, and I a thought, cow baby. And I thought my baby looks cute in that cowboy. <laughs> I wrote that down. Period. Nick. <laughs> That's it. my final nice thing. Uh -huh. That baby looked cute in that cowboy outfit, <laughs> and I wanted to pinch his little cheeks. <laughs> Wow. I had that thought where I I'm released <laughs> down for like a third nice thing of yeah. like if I saw that image like yeah. out of context of the yeah. movie like on a calendar or something yeah. I'd be like oh you're like I'm you own a, you if own that a was... baby's recreating famous <laughs> I mean, 70s and 60s I wouldn't own it but I'd be you know I'd flip yeah. through the whole thing I'd be actively interested in it versus you like know, like yeah. a little baby head in the broken door doing the here's Johnny pose from The Shining no not quite like that oh, but yeah. you know uh, do I not understand maybe, this maybe like a, <laughs> Wrapped in black, like a little, like a whistler kind of. Huh. You know. Today is my Aunt Nancy's birthday. Uh huh. And if that baby dressed as a cowboy was on the front of a card, <laughs> I would have bought it for her. <laughs> All right. I almost wrote that my third nice thing was that the baby was cute. Uh huh. But there was a point. I was like, I can't tell if the baby is making these facial expressions right. or it's the horrible CGI. Yeah. So, and actually, my second nice thing beat out the baby's cute. I like the dog. I, I like the dog when he's a regular dog because he does that little walk on that giant ball. I'm like, what a good little boy. He learned how to do this ball trick. Sometimes I think I know you so well. <laughs> Sometimes we're just miles apart. So, and then when the dog is wearing the mask, it it's the most like the mask, I guess. Correct. That the movie is. Because yes. the move, the original mask had the whole dog scene. And that was like a highlight. That was like a funny, like, the dog's wearing the mask yeah. in the Jim Carrey film. And this one... They definitely, like, the dog probably spends the most time in the mask. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. maybe that's for, if you if you cast Jamie Kennedy as your lead, maybe you are putting the dog in the mask yeah. on purpose. Yeah. Um, but there's... The dog certainly had more charisma. The dog CGI was... The baby CGI is horrible. Yeah. The dog CGI had some charm to it. Yeah. Like, it's those big, huge eyeballs with the tiny little pupils, and he's got his, like, crazy mouth, and he's laughing like uh, Muttley. He's laughing like Muttley. He, he's talking, and it's it, whenever he's, like, kind of forming words, it's horrible. Yeah, it but is. there's sometimes where, like, the dog's being, like, smashed around in the mask and everything, and I'm like, 
I probably could watch a movie about that. You know what? I don't know. Here's a thing with the dog. I don't know if you caught this, but in the first movie, the dog's name is Milo. Mm -hmm. And in this one, the dog's name is Otis. Otis. Ah. Which is a callback to that 80s movie, Milo Uh, and Otis. ah, Which I loved as a kid, but you full on see that dog give birth. And it was confusing as a child. (laughs) Gross. Uh, People who are my age know what I'm talking about. (laughs) All right. Well, Uh, Nick is a father. Yes, I, I only have dogs, yeah. so I'm not surprised that the baby wins out for you yeah. and the dog wins out for me. Yeah. But there you go. Yeah. The, but it's not the whole time. Like a lot of times, the dog I'm like, ugh. Yeah. But especially with, like the scene where the baby's face changes to make like a blowhorn or something. Yeah. I'm like, ugh, that's horrible. Yeah, that was terrible. So. What about when Loki took Ben Stein's face off and hung it up like a mask? Oh, that, that was, was such that was a upsetting, weird right? effect. Uh, or the one guy who had a comment about Loki being able to turn into a woman. That, like, yeah, redneck. Oh, yeah. That is that is a weird dated element weird. of this movie. That was weird. Anyway, the dog is my <laughs> nice thing. Ben's got one more. Well, both of you had things that I wrote down as potentials. Well, I guess you should have gone first. <laughs> I know. I missed my shot. Yeah. I get... I don't know. There's not much else. Um, you like the Hot Wheel car at the end? No, I did not. I, did, I <laughs> well, really the thought mask has its own car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I really. It's thought... on the cover of this poster we're looking at right now. Oh, that there purple, it is. horrible yeah. thing. I really thought like the top there. You know, it's this Hot Wheel car that has like a mouse mounted yeah. on the hood, and right. I really thought that they were gonna make that mouse move and bite oh, the. Yeah. I was like, please don't. Yeah. Like, I'm, mm. It didn't happen. So is that your next? Nice that was the that only. It, that was that it didn't literally bite the it. only restraint this movie showed. I thought you were gonna say, Eric, that one of your nice things was that song at the end. No. You. I saw it. I, saw I was it. dancing, but You're once I heard the pimps. lyrics, once I heard the lyrics oh, yeah. about like, hey, it's hard to be a dad. Love your baby though. <laughs> Don't well, watch the mask movie that we just gonna, made. Are we going to let Ben off? No, 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 no. Okay, I'll, 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 okay, I'll just prepared. say this. There, okay. There is a background poster that shows up a couple times that says Siamese Popes and has two popes next to each other. And I, I was like, huh, that. that's kind of funny. Uh, Not I, really, but maybe it would be interesting. Yeah, okay. And I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. I, a, I'd, I'd a movie a about like identical that. twins who are popes. Yeah. yeah. Let's watch that. Yeah. I'm probably connected, conjoined twins. Oh my goodness. Well, that's that Matt Damon, Greg Kinnear film. Yes, yeah. (laughs) Whatever that film was. Stuck on you. And Cher's in it, too. Is she? Yes, she is. Oh my gosh. So, uh, yeah, I I guess that's my last nice thing. Siamese Pope. Siamese Pope. Okay. Jeez, we really cruised through those nice things. I, this, this was a chore. This was really a chore. I mean, I know that Crystal and I had some, some hard, hard choices to make when we watched Battlefield Earth, but I actually think this was worse. This was shorter. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it was 90 minutes. It did not feel like it. But uh, I was not as upset as I uh, am now. Family film. I feel like This we, is not a family film. This I, is not a family I film. I mentioned on Dragon Ball Evolution. Don't let your kids watch this movie. Yeah. That's, I, Eric, I, I am a father, and I'm telling you, don't <laughs> let your children watch this I, movie. I was watching... When I watched Dragon Ball Evolution, I was like, if I knew... If, I, if some kids wanted to watch Dragon Ball Evolution... I put it on. Yeah. Like I, I after watching, it, I'm like, this is harmless. This doesn't. I don't care if this is bad or anything. This is this is fine. But Son of the Mask. Yeah. If my kid asks, can we watch Son of the Mask? I'm gonna yeah. wonder, what is Loki doing in my household, yeah. pretending to be my baby, asking for Son of the Mask? Yeah. So. Yeah. I didn't go a step further. I may discard this from the yeah. library. <laughs> we have this at the library. Nick and I work at. It gets checked out. Oh no. Who Who are we hurting? I know a lot. So yeah. I would rather have watched Dumb and Dumberer. Yeah. Than this. This move. Yeah, this is not a movie that could be saved by Jim Carrey. No. Well, maybe. No, I mean the prequel, Dumb and Dumber. Or oh. Yeah. When Harry met Lloyd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Jim Carrey said no to all these sequels, yeah. and then he made Dumb. Oh, that that was really bad. Dumb and Dumber Two. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. That's pretty bad. All right, Jim. You, you know what? And I gotta say, he's always harsh on Ace Ventura too. I actually think that's the funnier movie. Hmm. Ace Ventura is a better made movie, but two is funnier. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. That's a hot take on uh, three nice things today. Uh, So I'm never going to watch some of The Mask again. Nick, you're never going to watch some (laughs) of The Mask again. Ben. No, not in a million No, there's no situation. All right. Watch The Mask, and then I do recommend Itty Bitty Mask by uh, uh, Art Baldazar and Franco. Or go, uh, go real crazy and read the original Dark Horse comics. Yeah, but those are like super graphic yeah those and, are I mean, those are not for kids yeah they, they definitely changed it for the movie don't go expecting yeah. the jim carrey yeah uh goofy that's why i say no. itty bitty mask is the best yeah. place to go apparently if mask 2 had happened it would have kept jim carrey and also the 
other actress who wasn't Cameron Diaz. His like oh yeah his uh co-worker yeah whom i cannot remember the name of the yeah, character yeah i can't remember it peggy so, peggy yeah so peggy and mask the first mask was apparently supposed to be killed mm. but they kept her alive because he wanted to keep her around for uh, mask too did he end up with her or did he end up with cameron diaz? he ends up with cameron diaz at the okay. end, so uh yeah all right there you go boy i guess yeah you, you said that like we did them a favor <laughs> uh that is as nice as we're going to be on this episode. If anybody comes out of this not wanting to watch the movie, then we did. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's we true. This yeah. is a public service. Our job done. on this podcast is to say three nice things, but this is probably the only movie that I would say it's not not even worth watching once. It's not acceptable like, to watch once. Yeah, Battlefield Earth is horrible, but at least you have a conversation yeah. after Battlefield Earth. Yeah. This, this you have a lot of unsettling dreams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're That's all going to go our separate away. ways and yep. see if we can make it through the night. Yep. Uh, where can people find Nick? Uh, well, as Eric mentioned, I'm the co-host of the All the Book Show, so you can find us over on SoundCloud or iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts, or on Twitter at All the Book Show. Yeah, we just interviewed uh, author Lauren James, right. who wrote The Loneliest Girl in the Universe. A few weeks back, we interviewed NASA scientist David Dvorkin about his time working on the Apollo missions. A lot of other interviews, lots of other topics. Yep. I talk about the Battlefield Earth book. Yeah, we did a whole that. episode of that. Go back. We're not doing an episode on uh, some of the maths. No, we're not. That. No, no we're crossover not. But Ben there. is going to, you're going to join us on the next All the Books episode? Uh, yeah, it All seems right. like it. All right, that's <laughs> what we're doing. So check that out. I'm Dust vs. Tweak everywhere online, and apart from the other shows on radio, meanwhile, such as previously on x-men and is it classic does it rock i'm the co-host with nick on the podcast the all the book right. show you can have this magic anytime <laughs> anytime uh thank you to prophetic music for our theme song join us in our upcoming episodes as we suck tackle oh my gosh i almost said suckle <laughs> <laughs> son of the mask will do that <laughs> oh my you. gosh join us in upcoming episodes as we tackle the film batman and robin huh they do have prominent nipples <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh Again, you can find more about this show and others like it at the network's website, radiomeanwhile.com. Please follow us on Facebook or Twitter at Nice Things Pod, and please rate, subscribe, and share this show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next episode. This is our shortest episode ever, and I think the movie deserved it. I absolutely agree. Goodbye, everybody. Three, two, one.